Hello, we are working on 7.5. Um, this is the lesson quiz for factoring x squared plus bx plus c. So we are getting into factoring with a leading coefficient of one. So earlier in chapter seven, you were multiplying polynomials. So you were using FOIL or the box method. You were multiplying two binomials or even sometimes trinomials together to get an answer. Now what you're gonna be doing is the opposite. Instead of multiplying terms together to get the product, they're going to give you that product and you have to figure out what times what gave that product to you. So let me give you a quick example. So maybe earlier you were doing something like um, x plus 2 times x plus 3. And we multiplied x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x, 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times 3 is 6. Um, and then we would combine that middle term and get x squared plus 5x plus 6. Some of you also use the box method where you would get these same um, answers, but in columns and rows, and then you would combine your middle terms to get that same answer we did. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go back and review multiplying polynomials. What's different now with factoring is they would give you x squared plus 5x plus 6, and it's your job to figure out what times what gave that to us. So like I said, we would be doing the opposite. And with what I'm going to show you today, you would be able to say x squared plus 5x plus 6 factored is actually x plus 2 and x plus 3. So that's what you are doing in this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to be working with when the coefficient, the leading coefficient is not one, because there's going to be something a little different you have to do there. So let's look at number one. It says if the top of a triangle or rectangular table has an area of 35 inches squared and its dimensions have a sum of 12, what are the dimensions? You started learning about this when you were talking about factoring. Your teacher may have had you draw an X. And they may, gave you, may have given you numbers where there was a number on top and a number on the bottom, and you had to decide what two numbers multiplied to give you the top number and added together to give you the bottom number. So in this case, it says it has an area of 35. So we're going to put that on top because they multiplied areas length times width. So they multiplied to give you 35. Sum means add, so we're going to put 12 on the bottom. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply. I'm going to put a dot to remind me to multiply to give me 35 and add together to give me 12. So what you're looking for is a combination of numbers. So you can use a T-chart if you wanted to. And first you're gonna think about the factors of 35. And with this T-chart, we're gonna do it a little bit differently than we did with the greatest common factor. With the greatest common factor, I just listed it all in a row. This time I'm gonna put pairs, like one and 35. 2 wouldn't work, 3 wouldn't work, 4 wouldn't work, 5 and 7. So those look like our only factors. Well, if we go ahead and add 1 and 35 together, it's going to give us 36 and 5 and 12, 5 and 7 will give us 12. We want it to multiply to give us 35, which both of these do, but we need it to add together to give us 12, which only one of one set of these does, which is 5 and 7. It doesn't matter if you write 5 first or 7 first. But those are going to be the two numbers that multiply to give 35 and add together to give us 12. So the dimensions would have to be 5 inches and 7 inches. So again, we drew our x. We put the multiplication, the product on top, which was 35, the sum on the bottom, which was 12. We listed our factors and then added them together to see which ones gave us 12. We're going to continue doing what's called this X factor for the rest of these problems. We're just going to take it one step further. Let's look at number two then. So in number two, we're looking at um, fill in the blanks to write the factored form of Y squared plus 11Y plus 28. And they want us to write it in those binomials. When you are factoring, meaning you're breaking that trinomial up into two binomials, you're always gonna use your X. So I'm gonna draw another X. You're always gonna put the C on top and the B on the bottom. And what I mean by that is you always will have a problem that says AX squared plus BX plus C. 
So our C is always gonna be our constant. Our B is always the number that's next to the X. We are looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us C and add together to give us B. Well, in this case, C is 28 and B is 11. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 28 and add together to give me 11. If you think about your factors of 28, you've got one and 28. You've got, oh, actually I wanted to write those as par partners. Hold on one second, sorry. One and 28. You've got two and 14. Three doesn't work. And then we've got four and seven. So we're gonna look for which pair adds together to give us 11, that would be 29. That would be 16, that would be 11. So it would be four and seven. This is just like what we did in, in the first problem, but now we're gonna take it, take it one step further where we're gonna write each of these numbers inside a binomial. It doesn't matter which one you put first and which one you put second. I happen to put four first and then seven. You could have put seven first and then four, but the factored form meaning what times what equals y squared plus 11y plus 28 would be y plus four and y plus seven. Let's look at number three. In number three, they want us to factor and we've got x squared minus nine x plus 20. So underneath, I'm gonna write ax squared plus bx plus c to remind me where my B is and where my C is. Let's draw my X because they talk about factor. I'm gonna multiply together to get C, which in this one is 20. And I'm gonna add them together to get, this time it's a negative nine. So when we add our numbers together, we need to get a negative nine. Remember, anytime there's a negative in front of a number, they're a package deal, they have to go together. What's tricky about this one is that negative. So we need them to be able to add together to give us a negative number, which means at least one of our factors would have to be negative in order to add to give us a negative. But since we're multiplying to get a positive, that tells me both of my numbers must be negative. So when I go to write my factors for 20, I'm going to think of negative numbers that multiply together. So negative one and negative 20, negative two, negative 10, three, four, negative four, and negative five. This would add together to give us negative 21, negative 12, and negative nine. Well, it must be my negative four and negative five. So when I look at my answer choices, I need it to say, let me write my factored form. I'm gonna have my two binomials. Because it's an X squared out front, I'm gonna deal out an X to each. I always think of playing cards where I'm like, you get an X and then you get an X. And then what I'm gonna do is take these numbers, these factors that I figured out before, negative four and negative five, and I'm gonna plug each one into a binomial. So this one's gonna get negative four. This one's gonna get negative five. So looking at my answer choices, it would have to be this one. What's really nice about factoring too, is you can always check your answer by using FOIL or by using the box method. So if we were to multiply these together, you would get x squared uh, minus five x minus four x, plus 20, which would give us x squared minus 9x plus 20. So you can always check your work by then doing the opposite, which is FOIL or the box method. Time for number four. In number four, they want the factored form of y squared plus 6y minus 16. Let's get our x out. We're always multiplying to get what c is, in this case, negative 16. And we're gonna to add together to get what B is, which is positive six. So because it has a leading coefficient of one in that Y squared, we're looking for just what C is and just what B is. So we need two numbers that multiply together to give me a negative, but add together to give me a positive. Well, if we need two numbers to multiply to give us a negative, 
one must be negative and one must be positive because a negative times a positive is a negative. So I'm gonna keep that in mind when I'm finding my factors. I also realize that I need them to add together to give me a positive six, which tells me that the positive number is gonna be further from zero than the negative because it's really pulling that negative number over to the positive side. We need to end up with a positive six. Okay, so let's think of not just our factors um, with, we, we have to think of the factors of negative 16, but we're also going to have to write it a couple different ways. So for example, negative one and 16 would work, but then also one and negative 16. Both of them give you a negative 16. So we have to make sure we write both combinations. Um, negative two and eight, and then two and eight. Then we've got three won't work, but four, negative four and positive four, but we don't have to write this again because it's just gonna be negative four and positive four. So then we're gonna to work together to see when we add them together, what's gonna give us a negative six or a positive six. This is gonna give us 15, this'll be negative 15. This'll be positive six, negative six, and this'll be zero. So you can see the one that gives us positive six is gonna be negative two and eight. So that would be right here. What's nice about when you're factoring and trying to multiply for a negative and add for a positive is you can see when you add them together, the two numbers, so negative two and eight, and then positive two and negative eight gave us the same number, but one was positive and one was negative. So it's kind of a clue when you're trying to work that if you're looking for a positive six, but you get a negative six, you must need to flip the signs. The digits are right, but the symbols are just flipped. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and write our answer. So we know we're gonna have two binomials because a binomial times a binomial will equal your trinomial. Since I'm starting with Y squared out front, I know each binomial is gonna have a Y. And then I'm gonna use these numbers and plug it in. And it doesn't matter if I put the negative two first or the positive eight, you're just gonna fill in one in each binomial. So here's your minus two, here's your positive eight. And if you wanna check your work, you can do FOIL or the box method to check your answer. Okay, we've got one more left. It says the factored form of x squared plus 4xy minus 21y squared. This one is different from the other problems we've done because there are two variables. You see an x and you see a y. Luckily, we're starting with just an x squared with that leading coefficient of one. So we're gonna be using the same method that we've been using. We just have to make sure to include y in our second term in each binomial. So let's start with just what we're used to is our x. C is gonna be negative 21. So it needs to multiply to be C and it needs to add together to be B, which is four. Two numbers that multiply to give you negative 21, but add together to give you four. Well, if you're multiplying to get a negative, we know one has to be negative and one's positive. So we're gonna go through our pairs of factors trying to get to negative 21. And we're just going to list everything that we know. So negative 1 and positive 21, 1 and negative 21, um, negative 3 and 7, 3 and negative 7. So those are all of our factors. This would be a positive 20, negative 20, 4, and negative 4. So since we need it to be positive 4 right here, negative 3 and 7 are going to be the, the correct um, numbers. So negative three, positive seven. We're gonna come over to our binomials, two sets of binomials. Start by dealing out your first term, an X for you and an X for you. We're gonna include the numbers that we just solved for, negative three and positive seven. But what's different is not only um, is C that negative 21, but C is also a Y squared. So we're gonna give each of these a Y, just like we separated the first term of X squared and put an X in each binomial, we're gonna do the same thing for Y and put a Y in each binomial. So we've got X minus Y or three Y and then X plus seven Y. And when I look through my answer choices, it will be answer B. 
Hope this was helpful and let me know if you have any questions at all. Have a great day.